Hello YouTubers, Snap on John 100 back to uh, do the video that I promised you last time on being able to tell the difference between metric and SAE inch size bolts at a glance. Uh, as you can see, I got a little bit clean, a little bit of the shop cleaned up. It's still miles to go, but uh, I'll probably have to spend the rest of the summer doing that. Anyway, I've got some bolts over here. And I'll try to I apologize ahead of time for shaking and stuff. I, I think I'm going to have to get a, a tripod or something for this. But I wanted to start off um, talking about metric bolts. So anyway, um, now we're going to go to markings on, the, on these bolts. When you're looking at different bolts, and i got a bunch of them here. i got to pan back so we can see. Sorry about that. Um, we're just going to pick the one up. And if it's a metric bolt, you're going to be looking for numbers, and it's called a property class versus in a, the uh, SAE, it's grade. Okay, like you're going to have a grade five, grade eight. In the metric system, it's going to it's called property class, and so you're looking for numbers. If you've got numbers on on the thing, it's going to be a metric bolt. Oops. Let's see if I can get this here. Okay, can you see that's eight? 8.8 .8. okay anything else on there is just going to be markings that the manufacturer puts on there so you can ignore all that the numbers you're looking for is what's important okay the first number is going to be the tensile strength of the bolt and that is stands for the first um, digit is the tensile strength over 100. So in this one, when it's 8, that means it's going to be 800 newtons per millimeter squared tensile strength. And the tensile strength is the point w with which the thing will actually pull in half. Okay, that's the, the strength of where it actually breaks. And the second uh, number after the decimal point is a ratio. And it's a ratio of the yield strength to the tensile strength. And the yield strength of anything is the point with which the metal will move or stretch. It's always going to be less than the tensile strength. It stretches first and then snaps. So it's always it's a ratio of the yield strength over the tensile strength. So it's always going to be a number less than one. And then you multiply it times a, times ten. So this one is eight. So the ratio um, was 0.8 and it's times ten. So it's eight. So that means that the yield strength is going to be 80 percent of the tensile strength okay so on this one it's 800 newtons per millimeter squared so the uh, yield strength is going to be 20 percent less than that okay um, let's look at the next one the next one here is see if I can find it for you this is a 10.9 It's hard. 10.9, and so this has got a thousand newton or thousand meter. Or, excuse me, a thousand newtons per millimeter squared, and then at 0 0.9, so it's 90 percent. So this is going to be a bolt that is not going to stretch much before it breaks. So this is an extremely hardened bolt. This is one you're going to find in um, places like brakes and suspension components where you have to use extremely hard bolt. Um, usually for liability basically so you never want to if you lose this bolt you don't want to put in a class 8 bolt for instance you want to put in a grade 10 or higher uh, because it's a critical this bolt is critical because it is a hard bolt is a very critical application um, so let me look at another one here's one. Oh, this is a good one this one just has an 8 on it Let's see if I can find my hand this one has an 8 on it so um, sometimes they only have one. If they have one, it's just the tensile strength, because that's that's really the one that you really pay it, you know care about. The other stuff, um, you pretty much get what you're going to. You know, it's you can't really shop around much for uh, yield strength unless you're purchasing in bulk. Uh, this one is a 10.9. Also, this I'll point out is also a flange headed bolt versus this one which is just a regular hex headed bolt the flange head actually has a built-in washer on it that's part of it okay um, 
what was this one? This one is a four. So this is extremely soft. So you're going to find a bolt like this is going to be uh, holding uh, inside interior parts of the dash or some part inside of you know something which is not critical at all, and it's usually holding plastic stuff together. Okay, uh, that's enough for metrics. So now we're going to go to SA inch sizes, and what you're looking for with those are slash marks. Okay. Um, this has six slash marks on it, so it's a grade eight. Uh, the grade is you add two to the number of slash marks. It has six slash marks plus two is equals eight. So this is a grade eight, and a grade eight is equivalent to like a grade ten or twelve or class ten or twelve metric bolt. It's extremely hard uh, in the, the power equipment field. You're going to find this bolt holding the blade onto a lawnmower, okay, because that's a critical component that's got to be hard and you don't want that breaking off, okay. Uh, the harder they are, the more brittle they tend to be, so um, that's why you don't see very many, they're more expensive also, so you don't see a lot of um, really super hardened bolts on most of your lawnmower parts. This one right here has got three slash marks on it. This is a grade five. This is a general purpose, same as a, cl a class eight metric bolt is general purpose. This is the bolt you'll find on literally all the parts of the lawnmower or outdoor equipment because it's just a general purpose um, hard bolt. Okay, this next one has nothing on it and so you can tell absolutely nothing about it because I have found metric bolts with nothing on them as well as SAE bolts. Um, I happen to know this is a grade 2 because the packaging said it was a grade 2. So something like this you're going to have to rely on the packaging uh, for how hard it is. But you're going to know for sure that it's soft if there's nothing there. And so an application for soft bolt would be something with a super high vibration because um, it's very malleable and um, Anytime you're bending something or vibrating, you're work hardening the metal, and it makes, which makes it brittle and then causes it to break. So in an application where there's lots of vibration, you're going to want to put a real soft bolt in there so that um, it can withstand the vibration and not um, shear or break, get brittle and break off. Um, with this, you would end up having to measure the, the uh, thread pitch and, uh, you know, and measure the diameter of it to figure out what that actually is to see if it is an SAE bolt. But um, I happen to know this one is just because um, they came in a package. Okay. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have any questions at all, you can just um, let me know by um, commenting. And if, uh, if I can answer you, I will... I'll, I'll answer you either way. If I know, I'll let you know. I'm not going to tell you something that, that if I don't know, I'll let you know that I don't know, and I'll try to find out. But um, anyway, I just thought this might be helpful.